The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to discuss how you can save seeds this fall for next year, as well as hot maintenance what you need to do to get those hostas ready for winter. And our guest is TV garden host Joe Lample from Growing Greener World, and we'll answer your garden questions. The hour is full, so join us. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy that you've taken time out of your busy day to join us on the radio podcast or in-studio video replay. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Again, thank you for tuning in, whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2022 through our uh, radio app, through our parent website, which is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. Uh, podcast replay or in-studio video replay. Thank you so much. We're on all podcast platforms. Just search The Gardening with Joy and Holly Radio Show and you can catch up on what you may have missed. If you want to be part of the program, you can do that by just sending us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to be uh, vocal on the program, you can certainly do that by Dialing us up on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet that doubles stockpot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stockpot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies is limited, so order yours now at Proclamation Goods. Dot com. Well, it's that time of year, Holly, where some people have already shut down their garden. Others are trying to get as much out of their garden as possible. And other people fall in the middle like things weren't that good, but let's go ahead and ride the train out until it crashes into the wall type of thing. <laughs> and uh, you're trying to save seeds. One, <clears throat> Holly, why would one choose to save what they can in the in the realm of seed saving rather than just going to junk seeds and buying new seeds next year? Why would somebody do that? That's a good question, Joey, and let me answer it for you. Okay. Um, so, Is there a right answer, though? Uh, yeah, yeah, there is a right answer. Okay. I mean, so I guess there's a right answer if you... Depending on what your needs are. Right, and if you have maybe time or energy or whatever, uh-huh. um, it might be easier for you just to buy new seeds every spring. Or if your seeds were, your plants were trash and... You don't know if the viability have has the right, you know, it has right. So let's talk about the advantages yeah. of okay. seeds. I mean, for one, it's going to hopefully save you money. Mm-hmm. Um, ideally, to the this plant as you continue to plant the same type of seed over and over again. So say you have a beef steak tomato variety that you've grown and saved the seeds from your garden year after year. That plant has become acclimated to your little backyard, whatever, area ecosystem. So it's now used to that climate, not saying that it will not thrive if you move or if you share your seeds with somebody else. But it's like, hey, this is my DNA in this in this uh, climate. Acclimated in the reference of people who, let's say, live in the north are more... Uh, able to deal with the cold like we have thicker blood essentially Uh, not Not necessarily but you know somebody moving from florida versus somebody living in north dakota the person in north dakota is going to be more better to uh better to accommodate or better to deal with the temperature in the winter than somebody that's lived in florida all their life kind of the same thing but also maybe humidity levels every backyard often will have a microclimate yes um a very very micro microclimate and so this this uh as I said, beef, steak, tomato, for my example, is like, hey, I'm used to this temperature, daytime, nighttime. 
etc humidity what have you and it becomes over time especially as you save seeds from year after year it adjusts to that we actually um got seeds once an heirloom variety tomato from somebody who it was in their family yes I believe. and we still grow it elk yeah. park something eckert eckert yeah, yeah. Uh, now saving seeds What's the easiest seed to save? Well, I would say it's a, a bean, probably. You just let the bean dry on the vine. Now, you want to be aware that what type of, you know, pole bean, edible pod bean versus bush bean, uh, once once they dry, you don't know what they are unless you physically label them when you bag them up. Let's go back to that. Okay. I mean, the beans, yes. The beans, you, yeah. You, don't, you definitely want to label your seeds before... Before you beans, tomatoes, yeah, whatever it is, any, any of them. Um, but anyway, back to that. Yes. The easiest seed to save, yes, I would say, is beans, maybe corn. Um, well, corn, sun, if, sunflowers, if based on what's crossed with the por- corn. Right. Yeah, sunflowers. sunflowers are easy. Yeah, most um, of the squirrels plant those for us. Right, something that is you know you can see the seed pretty, yes. pretty basically. However, what do you think is the hardest seed to save? I would, I would say tomatoes. Tomatoes, yeah. you got to go through a, a fermentational process by soaking the seeds in water for several days in order to get the gelatinous slime off them. And then you drain them, and then you uh, allow them to dry, and then you save them. Uh, pole beans, bush beans, pole beans, for example, in this, we left on the vine last year in the fall. We came in in the spring this year. They were still there. We popped them out of the pods, oh, yeah. planted them, and they did just fine because in nature— Nature doesn't have little gnomes that go out and collect the seeds, bring them inside, put them in a little envelope, make them happy over winter, and then take them back out in the spring and plant them. They're out there all year long. <laughs> Some people do this system with tomatoes where they actually will just take a tomato and put it in their soil, uh-huh. and then they'll put like a, like the top of a, a milk jug on yes. top, like kind of like a winter sowing uh-huh. concept, and then that way they have tomatoes there, but then... In that case, you'd want to transplant some of those tomatoes well, yeah, or yeah. thin them out. Volunteer tomatoes, uh, you know, but you never know what you get on that if you just let them fall to the ground. Um, so you always want to label your seeds, um, no matter what you got. You want to be able what what you don't want to say, you can save heirloom and organic. You wouldn't want to save hybrid seeds. No, because what will happen is that the seed will typically favor the variety of whatever. You're still going to get more, some type of yeah. tomato or pepper or eggplant. But the more dominant yeah. parents. Right. So if, that, if it's a hybrid seed that promises like drought resistant slash, I don't know, what's another? Fast heavy growing, producer. Heavy producer. When you save that air or that hybrid seed, it's going to then regress back to one of those dominant traits, either right. of them. Now, it's not to fine. say you can't save them. Right, but you may not. You may still get a tomato or a pepper, but it may not be that luscious, beautiful orange or red tomato or purple pepper. You may have some type of something that doesn't taste as good or looks as pretty, uh, or the combination of both. Let's uh, get back to um, yes. tomato saving because okay, that that would be the most po- yeah. most popular thing. Yeah. I think it is the most popular. Um, so tomato seeds, you just basically take the 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 seed. The, the fruit, the, the fruit that's nearly pop, rotting on the vine. And you pop out the seeds into a glass or a jar with a little bit of water, and you can cover it with a coffee filter or something that has some some breathability. Um, and then it's going to ferment over a couple of days, and then you can rinse the seeds off and let them dry. Mm-hmm. Label them, let them dry on like a ceramic plate or a bowl, whatever. Label that before you start stacking them up. And, um, oh, yeah, this one on the left is going to be this. I'll remember that. And, and w- if you if you want to ha- see a visual of this, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and in the search bar on the right-hand side, type in saving tomato seeds, and we've got a number of videos on how we've walked through that. You'll know when the ferment process has come to the the completion is because you'll get mold on the top of the liquid that the seeds are setting in that you need to do this fermentation process again to get rid of that slime so the seeds can dry properly once they're removed from the liquid. The gelatinous slime in nature is a protective coating on the seed that when that tomato drops from the vine and lays on the ground, that gelatinous slime protects that seed over the course of the winter. Gelatinous. Glat- gelatin- Gel- gelatinous. The, the slime. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, over the winter, and then by spring it wears out or washes off, and then that seed can start to germinate. So that's the key on that 
you know, and if you're going to do a zucchini, wait, let the biggest one grow and save the seeds there. You can squeeze the seeds, make sure that they're firm. If they're flat, there's nothing inside of them. Right. Uh, you can also test this by soaking with, them. Same thing with any squash. Yes. Um, and then peppers, you just, you'll, you see the seeds. They're right there. You can just take that um, center part out, put it somewhere it's going to dry and the seeds will flake right off. Um, let's talk about radishes okay. and then like things like lettuce, uh-huh. spinach, uh, greens. Okay. They their seeds come at the during the crown, growing yeah during, during the growing cycle when they bolt. Right. So this if you have a lettuce plant that bolts, you will have like a bajillion lettuce seeds available to you. And that's you what we're going to have next year. We've got six or seven plants that have just got tens of thousands of seeds, no joke, and they're going to come up everywhere, which is a good problem to have. Um, so you can save those as they dry. Again, you go to that parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. Lettuce, we've got a video on how to save lettuce seeds. Um, you just wait until the, they're big puffy. Uh, the, the pods are puffy, and then you cut the head off and bang it inside of a paper bag, and all the dry seeds will fall to the bottom, and you can save your seeds that way. Same thing with radishes. Radishes will dry on the pod. And, turnips. Yeah, yeah, turnips, all that. Rutabagas. No, turnips and rutabagas, you're going to have to wait for the second year. Oh, Kale, yeah. uh, the brassicas, you're going to have to wait. They're biennial. The second year, they are going to produce the seeds. So you don't touch them at all. Carrots, another one. Don't touch them all this fall if you want seeds, and then they're going to produce seeds next year. Now, the question that somebody's probably saying is, well, I, I know I can just go to the grocery store and get a pepper or a tomato and pop the seeds out of that and plant those. Now, during the pandemic, where certain stores in certain countries were forbidding people to buy garden products or seeds, there was some people that were crafty and would go to the produce section and get a butternut squash and spaghetti squash and number figure out the, the vegetable, take it home, cut it open, pop the seeds out, and plant them that way. That does work. However, those plants are coming from who knows where and it's been sprayed with who knows what and pick a variety and who knows what variety that might be or the cross in which they, the seeds have, have been uh, crossed with during the growing cycle because they're putting them out for production for you to eat, not for them to save seeds for the next generation. So it Absolutely. can be done, yeah. but it's not... A, advisable when you have reputable seed companies all across the country and companies like Jung Seeds, uh, coupon code 10TG22, save 10% on your order. And saving seeds, it's a fun project to do with kids, fun project to do with non-kids, and you can save money. However, if you can, if you, if you've got questionable produce that you're trying to save seed from, all the effort and work that you've put into the garden, don't take the chance to go, well, I think the seeds might be good enough. If there's ever a question, set them aside and buy good fresh seeds from reputable companies so your effort doesn't be uh, wasted in all the time you've put into this. And you become frustrated. Right. Right. Frustrated and disappointed. Right. Well, what if you go to Walton's doc, uh, waltonsinc.com, you will na not be frustrated or disappointed by the selection of herbs, spices, and everything but meat product, everything but the meat that they have, saws, stuffing, tools, thermometers. So it, keep going. Yeah. If you, <laughs> if you, you obviously, if you're saving seeds, you you care about where your food comes from, and at Walton's you can get all the equipment, seasoning, supplies to make sausage, jerky, any other meat product your way to your high standards. If you want to make some delicious snack sticks, jerky, etc., that people will actually like or you'll like, um, Walton's created MeatJustSticks.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's Inc. or Walton's.com and then MeatJustSticks, MeatJustSticks.com. Um, if, and, if, if if they don't have it, it probably doesn't exist when it comes to uh, your spices and seasonings and tools that you need in the kitchen. If did you I say that website right? Well, is it Walton's Inc. Inc. Dot com? Yeah. Walton's Inc. Okay. Dot com. And uh, check them out. Use, you can use code GROW50 yes. to save 10% off orders of $50 or more and get free shipping. Free shipping on that if you use $50 or more. Coupon code GROW50. Hang out with us. We're going to discuss the art of taking care of your hostas before winter. You're tuned into the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. 
It's time to get excited for our fall season. Tree Dash Ripe delivers the best Oregon pears, Wisconsin honey crisp apples, and Florida citrus you'll ever eat, directly from the farm within days of being picked. Their pears and apples can be delivered directly to your home, and you can find their citrus at over 200 orange stops throughout the Midwest. This winter, all the event details and ordering information can be found on their website, tree-ripe.com. And an extra bonus for you listeners, get apples and pears delivered right to your house with 10% off your purchase by using coupon code H-O-L-L-Y-1-0, HOLLY10. The discount's only available for home delivery. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Are you seeing fruit flies in your kitchen? Fruit flies love a fall harvest. They hitch a ride into your house on the fresh veggies and fruits you are picking. Break the breeding cycle with fruit fly traps from Rescue. Rescue fruit fly traps are reusable and an economical way to keep fruit flies at bay. They're the only trap with a no-spill design. And only the Rescue fruit fly traps are made in the USA. Learn more about them at rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-E-U dot C-O-M. Take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable gardener.com and click on the money tab at the top of the page and they're all listed for you the gardening with joy and holly radio show is brought to you by the following pro plugger chip drop bell buster johnny appleseed ivy organic milkweed balm waltons incorporated blooming easy plants jung seeds find all sponsors at the wisconsin vegetable gardener.com and thank them for their support Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy that you are part of the program today. Some of you have had wonderful gardens this year. Others of you, including us, have had not the greatest gardens. Some of it was contributed to Holly to not watering enough. So let's not make that mistake again next year. Let's get her some tree diapers and keep our plants alive. Absolutely. If your plants could talk, they might tell you... uh They have some complaints about maybe not being properly watered, either too much or too little, um, et cetera. How do you water properly? Take the guesswork out by using the tree diaper. Tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that stabilizes soil moisture by taking the excess water and slowly releasing it when the plants need it. The tree diaper is filled with water from the rain or when you water and releases water over three weeks time. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Whether you're a first time gardener or advanced tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA. Check out all the sizes they have available. That's treediaper.com, treediaper.com. And they will improve your, make your plants happy. Yes, they will. So hostas, Holly. Uh, Some people say if you plant one hosta, you are now addicted to hosta growing. Um, we've never felt that we were addicted to hosta growing. However, there are some things in which one needs to do in order to make sure their hostas continue to grow and thrive now before the winter so they can come back in the spring with full force. I mean, I could see this because there's a lot of varieties of hostas out there and you could really get creative and people will divide and separate their hostas and well the answer always, and... the, the answer always is uh i got some space here under a uh, uh, kind of partial shade what should i plant the hostas <laughs> it's it is like the catch-all uh gardening advice yes yeah absolutely what should i bake hosta hostas brownies my <laughs> my thing is always baking brownies yeah. so anyway you want to um if you are planting a hosta or you think your hosta needs help you can apply a well-balanced slow release fertilizer after planting or when growth emerges in the spring so this is something maybe you don't think about doing do you fertilize your hostas you're like well probably not but if you want them to look nice you could do that yes uh something with a a well-balanced fertilizer if you're concerned that you're losing some 
uh, color, you want to up the first number, which is the nitrogen. Uh, fertilizer bags have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Uh, that higher uh, first number is the stuff that makes it green. And um, based on where you got them planted, sometimes you do have issues with slugs. Uh, attacking them so you can do you know a couple of uh, things one would be uh, move them uh, second would be there is mechanic there is uh, m products you can buy you can also do a beer trap explain a beer trap Holly what uh, that does to the slugs for the instance of either you've got them in your vegetable garden or you've got them in your hosta bed and they're destroying the plants Sure. So what happens is that you take um, a little dish like a tuna can or a, a small something that's probably at least an inch deep. You could you could do a small like um, plastic. What are those called? Uh, uh, it's, party cup. Yeah. Party yeah. cups. And you bury it so that is the top. The lip of it is level with the soil and you put some beer in there and the slugs are coming along and they like the smell of beer and I'm assuming the taste of it and then they fall in and then they can't get out and they die drunk. And you can, if it rains, you'll need to replace this on a regular basis or check it every day based on the uh, population of slugs in your area. Now that we're in fall, Holly, uh, there's some things we want to do to our hostas before freeze comes, or should there be some things in which we do to our hostas before the freeze and snow comes for thus us in the areas where that is going to happen? Yeah, so you can cut them back. You can wait until after a few frosts and they're going to get mushy and you can cut them back to avoid slug and disease issues and then you just clean around the plants remove brown leaves um, you could also cut them back in the spring so if you say you get a few frosts and then it gets really cold and you just don't have time or want to bundle up to get out there and cut them you can wait until the spring to do so. Should we mulch in the fall or do we need to mulch? You don't need to mulch. Okay. Uh, mulching, if you have uh, air, so, soil conditions that would favor uh, mulching because they are a very dry location and you don't want to use a tree diaper to uh, hydrate your hostas, even though you can put it underneath mulch, uh, you, you know, you can put uh, put mulch around that. Trans uh, uh, dividing them, fall or spring? That's something or you never. Do, no, that's something you want to do in the spring. Okay. Um, so what you want and to I, do... And I say never because there are some plants, Holly, that if you divide them, you kill them, even though you think I should be dividing them. Right. Hostas aren't like that. They're easy to divide. Very you just robust. Have to, yeah. You just have to, you have to decide if that's something you want to do, mm -hmm. or maybe you feel like that hosta plant is, um, taking up a lot of space and you want to move it or you want to put something else there next to it or whatever. Um, so yeah, you want to think about that. Um, transplanting is done in the early spring when leaves just begin to emerge and all you're going to do is you're going to take, um, they don't need it for their health. I want to mention that. Okay. Uh, so if they have less space, they'll just grow less quickly. So what you're going to do is you're going to take and look for the eyes or like the growing tips emerging from the ground. Mm -hmm. And then you can, at that point, um, separate them. You can figure out how each little plant is growing from the root. And then you would pull out right. like a, a plant. Right. And, or if you want it to be very simple, you just dig the crown up, dig the whole plant up and cut across and cut across and do four plants out of one based on the size. Or you might just be able to do half and call it good and, and expand your hosta growing uh, area. Uh, right. Yeah. So, and, and then, I just wanted yeah. to talk about some past issues. We talked about the slugs and the beer. You can also use a 20% ammonia solution. So that would be one part ammonia to four parts water. And at in the spring, you can take that, put it in a watering can, and then you would just water around your hosta plant, the crown, and just as the little, um, what's it called? The little uh, blooms, mm -hmm. greenery whatever is poking through and growth that will tips help. growth tips and that will help with the slugs fun fact there's over 3000 registered varieties of hostas in the world that's a lot of hostas that's uh, almost there's a 70 species of hostas and over 3000 registered varieties 
Um, so you have a lot to choose from. And not, not, all, not all of them are commercially available based on where you're at. And uh, they do bl- um, those, they do bloom. They are grown primarily for the foliage, not so much the blooms. So just, you know, there, there, there are some choices out there. You might have to mail order them in. Your garden center may not have many varieties at all, but a good selection that you can pick from. And the largest hosta reaches typically about six foot wide and has massive bluish green foliage and uh, can be very pretty based, you know, where you're at and the conditions. But that's a very large hosta, six foot wide high. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a, a big hostel. So, so that that makes you want to be that brings up a point of you want to be aware of what is the maximum growth that this plant or any plant that you buy has. Oh, it, it says four to six feet wide. Well, I'm just going to shove it in this corner because it ain't going to get that big. It will get that big, and you're going to have issues. Okay, so um, keep that in mind on whatever you're growing. Know the maximum size and make sure that you have space and don't cram it up against something that it's going to impede or damage that place in that building or that that whatever it is. So, well, Holly, with that being said, uh, fall is here. Kids are in school. Nights are getting colder and you have forgotten about your lawn. Yeah, just because it's fall, we don't want to forget about our yards. Those Japanese beetles either, they may be gone, but they're not far. They feasted on your roses. They laid eggs in your turf so they can start again next year. You can take a stand with Phylum's Grub Gone. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT granular that specifically targets scare pests and their larvae. Simply apply the granule with a spreader, irrigate into the soil, and let the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Yes, and the best part about it is Grub Gone has zero restrictions. Um... It's not. It's the only non-chemical choice that effectively effectively controls grubs, and it is non-toxic to bees, butterflies, and it is has no labor restrictions uh, for water toxicity either. You can get all of your grub gone at beetlegone.com. That's beetlegone.com to add to get your grub gone. Save ten percent on your order when using term coupon code Garden Talk Ten. Beetle gone. Dot com for your grub gone. Hang out with us moments away. Host of PBS's Growing a Greener World, Joe Lample will be with us. You're tuned in to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24 7. Just dial 1 800 927 show. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1 800 927 show. This week's Garden Tip is sponsored by The Amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. White flies are another sap-sucking, soft-bodied insect like aphids. They prevent plant growth by feeding on your plants and sucking the nutrients from them. Leaves will look wilted and molted, but also become coated with a sticky substance called honeydew, which is secreted by white fly nips and adults. Spraying the amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator around, under, and all over the plant can help rid your plant of these aggressive pests. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the day of harvest, and doesn't leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Hey gardeners, it's that time of growing season, so let's start canning. Head over to Fleet Farm for all of your canning supplies and jam mixes. In one easy stop, find everything you need, like jars, lids, canners, strainers, racks, spatulas, and funnels from top brands like Ball and Kerr. Plus, pick up mixes, sugar, and more. When it comes to canning, get everything you need at your canning headquarters, Fleet Farm. With the right tools, plant maintenance is easy and more effective. Ironwood Tool Company has the right tools for your project. From pruners to loppers to saws and shears and cleanup tools, get the right tool for this season, making your job much easier. Find them all at ironwoodtools.com. 
Are you bugged by bugs? You need naturally green products, no more bugs. Environmentally friendly, made in the USA. No More Bugs is a cedar blend that repels and eliminates mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, roaches, and ants, and more. No Bugs is safe for you, your pets, and plants. Visit natgreenproducts.com. You can enter promo code GREENTHUMB10 for 10% off your purchase of any size of No More Bugs. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. Use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Thanks for listening to the Guardian with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Moments away, Joe Lampo, host of PBS's Growing a Greener World, and he's got a new book out. But first, Holly, Simple Grow. Feed your plants so they can be happy, healthy, all growing season. Yeah, are you worried about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow to their potential with Simple Grow. Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products that you order, from Simple Grow, you are getting 100% worm castings, not filler plus castings. Um, promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow All Natural. Order free worm castings. There's only one ingredient worm castings. No chemicals or additives will seep into your food, and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. For indoor and outdoor use, you can find all the information at simplegrow.com. Find out more at simplegrow.com. Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline, sponsored by Proclamation Goods, and bring in our guest for this week. Joel Lample is the host of Growing a Greener World, which has been on PBS for 12 seasons. He's also an author, podcaster, home gardener, and has a passion for living an eco-friendly lifestyle. Welcome to the program, Joe. Hey, Holly. Hey, Joey. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. You're a very busy individual, and we're happy that you've made time for Holly and myself and all of our listeners across the country, and and I think we're all going to learn a few things uh, in this short period of time. Thank you. What is one of your biggest and maybe surprising successes in your garden this year? What blew you away that, oh, I didn't expect that? (laughs) I love that question. You know, something that jumped out at me as you were asking me that is my tomato season was really good this year and it's not that i don't have good years all the time it's just that where i live in zone 7b and and just north of atlanta georgia it's very hot it's very humid and that is the enemy to tomato growing success (laughs) it's really hard to grow tomatoes for a you know full-on season beyond just the initial harvest and keep them going because you know they'll continue to produce until that first frost kills them back if conditions are right but down here it's like you're just You're fighting an uphill battle. But this year, unlike previous years where I was pulling my plants out sometime by mid to late July and I didn't even have tomatoes in my garden by August, this year I've got several in the garden. You know, here we are mid, you know, September something, and I've got some really nice looking plants still in the garden. That's because I left a few of them alone because I knew instinctively that if I could just wait it out, potentially they could fix themselves once they got past the pest and disease cycles they could restore and recover and you know basically regenerate and they have and now i kind of wish i'd done that with more of the plants but at least i have a few out there so my big aha joey is that um i'm still harvesting tomatoes as we speak from a few plants in my garden whereas in previous years that never would have been the case this time of the year well, you've got tomatoes, and we had some. a lot of places in the northern uh, parts of the country has had uh, horrendous tomato harvest, and we were included in that. There's other people that, like you, couldn't have a better harvest, but uh, the nights were too warm for us, and we've gotten yeah. about t- 10 tomatoes off of 100 plants this year, and it's really been uh, uh, a terrible season for that. Uh, hey, for what it's worth, Joey, you know, I talk to people all over the country and my, with my students in the Online Gardening Academy all the time. And, and across the country, it's been a really hard year, a really, really hard year. 
That's helpful to know. So speaking of failures, <laughs> what was one of your <laughs> failures or learning experience this year in your garden? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know that it was a failure, but it's an ongoing challenge with growing uh, cucurbits and the squash vine borer on my, you know, my squash plants and my pumpkins and winter squash. And I, after this year, Holly, with the uh, the challenges that I, along with everybody else that grows squash, has with the squash vine borer uh, that basically decimates your plants earlier than later, I am taking it on. I'm taking the challenge on to come up with a system that incorporates early screening and detection, trapping the male squash vine borer because when he shows up, you know, troubles ahead with the female and egg laying. So your precursors identifying that and then dealing with proactive measures to put barriers in place, self-pollinate, um, use BT or whatever you need to do. And then uh, beneficial nematodes, once they pupate back in the soil, uh, I'm on a campaign to figure this thing out because I can tell you from our audience, it's the biggest challenge going across the board when growing food. And I want to, I want to provide a game plan and a map and a program to help people do that. But for me, it was another year of frustration. And it's one of the reasons I don't really love growing squash or cucurbits is the challenge of the squash vine borer combined with the prickliness of the leaves and the scratchiness on your arms and all the work that you do to get a few squash or winter squash, you know? So I'm not dissing it. I'm just looking at my options for what I want to grow and thinking about the challenges relative to that and the payoff versus the cost. And it's like, I don't know. So anyway, as a public service to everybody else, <laughs> including myself, I want to figure it out and share that information with it, the world. Right. And, and you're thinking, OK, all this frustration for this little harvest when I could go down the, the, the grocery store and, and buy them for a dollar a pound or even two dollars yeah. a pound. Well worth the uh, grocery store trip rather than all the frustration and plant something in that spot that I know will produce uh, instead of the, yeah. all this other stuff that I got to deal with. Yeah, and, and that's exactly right. And I think that comes with wisdom over over the years and just finally recognizing your your challenges and, and what's worth it and what's not. And that's just a great example of like, you know, I'd rather support a local farmer at the farmer's market and buy his squash and then uh, and use my spot more product, productivity, product, productively. Absolutely. So was horticultural gardening education um, providing education something that you knew you'd always want to do? Or was there an indirect path and a journey to get there? And what was that journey? Uh, I knew it was something I always wanted to do. I love that question. My mother was an English teacher, a high school English teacher. And so when I was, um, when I fell in love with gardening at eight years old, I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And by the time I got to college, I said, Mom, you know, let's talk about college. And she said, yeah. And I talked about wanting to get a horticulture degree. And she said, well, that's, that'd be fine. But why don't you get a business degree at the same time so that when you're coming out of college, you've got better options and she was right about that because more people were interested in a business degree than a horticultural degree but so so i entered the world coming out of college with a with a suit and tie job but my heart was in horticulture and i knew that i wanted to ultimately do that so it wasn't a direct path but it was one in which i i kept my eyes and ears open and just I, I believe that that opportunity would present itself at some point in the future, but I just didn't know when. And I also knew that by the, I also knew that the older I got, you know, I had two kids, you know, eventually, and I still was in the professional world. And I thought, man, I've got to have something in horticulture that pays the bills because I'm doing pretty well in business, but I don't love it. And I want to be in horticulture. And that's when that opportunity with DIY network surfaced. And I was, uh, eventually picked as their host for three years on their show. And that, that was able to replace my income. And then once that show retired, because we ran out of things to grow and we, you know, didn't have any more options for new episodes, I was, you know, just timing was good. And I was able to pick up another TV gig. And then eventually three years later, I started growing a greener world and it just worked out from there, but it was because of the business degree. Plus my experience with um, having a national presence with the, DIY network and you know I just everything came together and and from there it's just been a really ble a real blessing and um, 
I've been able to make a good living at it. But it was it was not a direct route, that's for sure. Well, without telling us more than we, we should know, that business degree, <laughs> did that help you negotiate what you wanted to do and how you wanted to obtain certain things with a TV? Uh, I think in the big picture, it really helped me think more like a business person because I had some of those skills that I think as a business, per, you know, with a degree in business, you had courses and being in business on top of that gave me a really good perspective on how to be a business person when I became self-employed with my horticulture business. And so that did help me with negotiation. It helped me think about how to build my team and my company and where to start and the things that I needed to do. And, you know, I, I wasn't, I had a good wide, broad perspective on the important things. And then I was able to meet the right people to help me in the specific nuances of each of the departments, you know, of what I needed to do. But, you know, I trademark Joe you know, Gardner and other brands that I've since developed since then. And with the help of other very talented people that have come on board with me, we've continued to grow. But, you know, I had the initial general knowledge, but it was it was really the help from other people along the way that teamed up with me to take it to the next level. Fantastic. So we are talking with Joe Lampo, the host of Growing a Greener World on PBS. So let's talk about your new book. Let, tell us about your new book, The Vegetable Gardening Book, your complete guide to growing an edible organic garden from seed to harvest. What, what, do you, what can you tell us about that? What is something in there that, that would make us want to go grab that book? Well, okay. So here's what it would be. Okay. If, you, if you want to be confident and and feel like you've taken the guesswork out of gardening and understand the why do behind the how to of what you do when it comes to vegetable gardening. This is that book. And the way that I wrote the book is I envisioned writing it in a way so that whoever bought that book could read the words and feel like they were hanging out with me in the garden. And it was just me and them talking gardening and i was showing them how i do what i do and why i do what i do and the reasons why i do that thing so that they could get it you know like the, they'd have light bulb moments every conversation because i've been i've been doing this all my life and i'm good at it and right. um and so i wanted to create a guidebook that helped people feel like Oh my gosh, I get it now. You know, I feel, I feel confident. I feel like I can do this. And from the feedback I've gotten so far, you know, the book's only been out, out about a week, but you know, there's been some good feedback already. And that's, that's pretty much what people are saying. And that's exactly what I endeavor to do. So it's teaching people the best practices for how to be an organic gardener, specifically how to be a organic vegetable gardener. And then I teach them about the fab 40, which is the top 40 crops that, people want to typically want to grow and that is 20 warm season and 20 cool season crops and so the nuances of those kind of the down and dirty like the baseball card basic information that you really need to know and then my personal experience anecdotal information added to that particular crop for those 40 different things so that you have what you need to know to know how to grow it and harvest it and store it and the challenges you're going to have along the way with how to plant it how to sow the seeds how to transplant it, how to deal with pests and diseases. So it's all right there for 40 of those crops. So I've really poured myself into this and um, wrote it the way that I would want to have a vegetable gardening book written for me if I were that person wanting to know how to be a better, better gardener. And you have other books. So what number of book is this that you've, you've written? This is, this is number three. And I, honestly, I didn't think I was going to write number three because after number two, 15 years ago, I thought I was done. <laughs> and just, just, Jessica Wallacer with Cool Springs Press kept talking to me about a new book idea and a new book idea. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. I don't have any time. You know, I really like you and I love your company and all that, but I'm just done writing books. I don't have time. And so she, on this book, she contacted me one last time. She said, look, I understand you told me no a million times. I'm throwing up a Hail Mary here. This is my last chance. But we want you to write the vet, the new vegetable gardening book. We want to write the new go-to guide for gardening for vegetables. You're the one we want to write. We, You're the one we want to write it. And we don't think there's anybody else that can do it better than you. We just – we see you as that person. And, and before she told me what the topic was, I said, Jessica, you know I – 
like you very much, but before you tell me what this is, you know there's a 99.9% chance that I'm going to say no to whatever you're about to tell me is the topic. And then when she said it's on vegetable gardening, I just – my heart sank because <laughs> I I felt like I needed I needed to be the person to write that book. Right. So I said, yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about what we're getting in the fall here. Leaves are going to start to fall in, in a few weeks, if not already in some parts of the country. What is the importance of using leaves and how do you use them best in your on your property in your garden? Well, leaves are a really fantastic mulch. First of all, they're free. And when you allow them to shred, when you shred them or break them down, whether you mow over them or you buy a leaf shredder, or a weed whacker and you chop them up and then you just store them in a basically a fenced corral as I call it for five or six months they start to break down so I call them semi-composted so if you go from fall to spring in that state where they're breaking down after they've been shredded you have the most incredible leaf mold or leaf mulch that you can easily spread onto your raised beds or your in-ground beds or wherever you're going to mulch and it's already going to work because it's already breaking down so you've got an input that's going to improve your soil as it continues to biodegrade while at the same time providing that protective surface over your soil to protect that as well as suppress weeds as well as to provide nutrients to your plants as well as to avoid runoff and erosion and mitigate compaction to your soil and all the things that mulch does but by virtue of using the leaves many times like for example holly and joey in my town the subdivisions require that homeowners remove the leaves from their yard. They, they consider them unsightly and an eyesore, and they need them to be moved. So these homeowners have to bag them up and set them on the curb, and the trash companies come and pick them up, and they don't take them to a composting or a recycling center. They throw them into the solid waste with everything else. So all of this beautiful organic matter is being thrown away and wasted and becoming, you know, methane gas and so i see this opportunity to say to these homeowners hey if you'll let me know when you're going to put your leaves out in these bags i'll come pick them up and take them home and i'll and here's the here's this extra step that i do you know there's a lot of beneficial insects that overwinter and leaves and so if i were to take all those leaves and shred them up i'm running the risk of potentially killing some really good beneficial insects that are overwintering there yet keep in mind that 100 percent of those leaves in those bags that i would not have picked up would have gone to the landfill in which case they would have died anyway so by my picking them up and taking them home my deal with myself i take half the bags that i collect and i collect about 350 bags a season and i dump out half of them onto my landscape native plant beds and so they remain intact I basically free the leaves. That's the term I use. I free the leaves <laughs> into my bed. <laughs> and then the other half, rather than them going to the landfill, those are the ones I shred and I'm composting them. And so therefore I'm feeding microbes and earthworms in the soil food web and using them as mulch in my garden beds. So I think it's a really good win, 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 very good compromise that I can continue to ma- remain organic with the leaves that I collected from my neighbors while half of them have been re- returned back to the landscape so that whatever beneficial insects have overwintered there continue to live out their life and, and then come on back in the spring. Good good advice for all of us. Uh, before I ask you how we can get a hold of your book and, and, and more information about you, people who are listening, they, they have been a fan of yours for years. They've seen episode after episode of Growing a Greener World. And I want you to uh, acknowledge that the, you've got all kinds of awards for that program. You don't have a bus full of crew members. You have, it was a very, very, and it is a very small operation to make this production so professional. Thank you. Uh, we're, what I say, very lean and mean. We're efficient. Um, we don't have a big budget. You know, if we had a bigger budget, we'd have more people. But by virtue of the fact that we only have so many dollars to put it in the show, well, I can't afford a big crew. And we've also learned, I mean, I've got a very talented team. It's a small, mighty team, but we're very good at what we do. And we've been doing it a long time. So, you know, I remember, I'll never forget, and I don't know if I can say it the way I heard it, but one time we were on location and we showed up in our SUV or our minivan with all our stuff in it. And the person we were going to feature was asked us, they said, well, 
where are the rest, where are the other trucks, where are the rest of the trucks, you know, when's the equipment van show up? And I'm, we're like, well, this is it. This is everything. We're all right here, packed up in the Subaru and the, or the minivan or whatever it was. And we did our show. We were, we were with them for two days and we got everything we needed, but we worked our tails off the whole day. They saw how efficient we were and how well we worked together and how well we knew each other and we knew what we were there to do and we knew how to do it. So we, d- we did it and we, directed them we coached them we got what we needed we didn't cut anybody off we 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 really were good at making use of our time but at the end of the day at the end of the second day actually that person said you know i've watched your shows um um i was always in awe but now when i look at how you do that she said you know people knew how hard you worked to make these shows look so good with team that's so mighty but small they would be in awe you know something like that and it was a huge compliment but it was a real affirmation in the fact that that is exactly how it is you know you learn to do what you can do you combine your talents and your gifts and you make the most of what you have with the budget that you have and we've been doing that long enough to to do it and you know honestly we've been doing it since the first year i mean we hit the ground running in season one but it was because i knew good people and they came together and we had talent and skills and gifts and everybody came together and we've never slowed down from that you know we 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 just recognize that as there's the reason for the success it's not one person it's a team and it's just being efficient and working well together well, that being said, how can people find uh, more about you? How can they get a hold of your book? And uh, where, where do we go? Well, I think the single best place is joegardner.com. And that's my website that's got links to everything else. You can get to the YouTube channels. You can get to the book. You can get to uh, our podcast, The Joe Gardner Show, and um, the television show, Growing a Greener World. And on Instagram, during the week, I, I hang out mostly on Instagram, and that handle is at Joe Gardiner as well. So that's a good single source to find me. And, um, you know, if anybody reaches out to me, however they do that, I'll eventually see it, and I'll, get, I'll, I'll respond to them if they – or asking a question or, you know, or soliciting some sort of response. Well, Joe, we greatly appreciate the time you have granted uh, Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Thank you very much for that. It is my pleasure, you guys. You have a good one. Absolutely. Thank you. And when we come Thank back, you. it's your garden questions, our garden answers. You're tuned in to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio Got show. A question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10 10- TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. ShipDrop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, ShipDrop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit RootMaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's RootMaker.com. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. When winter hits with heavy snowfall and frigid temperatures, your outdoor furniture takes a beating. What you need to do is cover it with custom protective covers from CoversAndAll.com. They have a bunch of waterproof tear and abrasion resistant fabrics to choose from. And each cover is made with waterproof stitching. Covers and All has a lot of customization options, incredibly easy design and order process to make covering any size or shape a snap. Visit coversandall.com and use code GARDEN25 at checkout to save 25% off your purchase. 
Thanks for listening to the Guardian with Joey and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Guardian with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zine, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy that you stayed with us for the program. If you've got a question, we've got an answer. We can certainly get that to you at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. If you'd like to give us a call, you can do that on the Proclamation Hotline, brought to you by Proclamation Good. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. Proclamation Goods creates cooker for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made right here in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet that doubles in a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, a skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited to orders, not ProclamationGoods.com. This question is sponsored by Fleet Farm and FleetFarm.com. Holly, is it safe to use black walnut chips on my walk paths between my raised beds? My raised beds are not like most beds. I have put them on a slight slope, and the bottom of the side of the bed is dug into the soil. The other side is a little below the soil level it, i am using the wood chips as a weed barrier and a moisture retention mechanism well the mulcher wood chips from black walnut are not recommended for plants sensitive to the julong which is the um the chemical that the black walnut tree does leach into the soil however composting the wood chips for a max a, a minimum of six months allows the chemical to break down to a safe level for even plants that are se- sensitive to to the juglong. There you go. Uh, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. And Elaine has a question. Hi, my name is Elaine and I'm from Greenfield, Wisconsin. I got a question on a butterfly bush. I have all these seed pods on it. Should I leave them or should I cut them off? Thanks a lot. All right, Holly. Yeah, thank you, Elaine, for your question. All you need to do is just take those seed pods and you can snip them off or break them off, whatever. Um, if they're dry enough, you can break them off. You can do that. You use your little pruner tool and just take them off. And then you can either compost them, toss them in the trash, or if you want, you can plant some and, and grow more butterfly bushes. Yeah, if you want to be like Elaine, you can certainly do that by giving us a call at 1 800 927 7469. All right, Holly. Uh, where do I find good hard neck garlic? Um, so you can go to jungseed.com, use code 10TG22 to save 10% off your order. That's jungseed, J-U-N-G, seed.com. Use code 10TG, like the garden, garden 22 to save 10% off your order. And they still have quite a bit in stock. Uh, some of these places are selling out quite quickly uh, for whatever reason, but they have it available. Uh, no, let's see. I planted asparagus this spring, Holly. Uh, should I fertilize it and mulch it before winter? Um, no, you can fertilize in the spring. Mulching is optional. Trim the ground, trim the asparagus t- down to the ground so the spar- asparagus beetle does not become an issue for you. So, no, you don't need to fertilize it. You just, or, yeah, or mulch it. Um, you can be optional with the mulching, but just make sure you trim it down. Yeah, the common asparagus beetle is an adult that lives in the, sh- the sheltered place of the stalk of the asparagus. Um, and if you don't trim it, it can cause problems the, the coming spring. Um, it, it will also... 
uh, start laying eggs in it and the eggs will hatch. It's a whole big thing. So once the asparagus falls over or before you are done or the snow comes, however you want to gauge that, uh, and it gets cold, snip it off at the ground level and compost those uh, fronds, uh, the big tree-like shrub things that are on top of the asparagus that have been feeding the roots so you don't have the asparagus beetle problem. Well, we are out of time, Holly, and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today? Would like to revisit it? You can certainly do that by going to your favorite search engine and typing in the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Or you can send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Uh, you can send us that and we'll get you a link to this show and answer any of your questions. Tune in next week to the program where we'll be discussing how you can build your soil for next year, as well as dealing with and understanding the cause of algae bloom on ponds, lakes, and rivers. And our guest is Catherine McCann horticultural therapist and specializing in sensory and therapeutical garden design and we'll answer your garden questions so until next week for holly baird i'm joy baird and we will see you in the garden (laughs) 